To all who come to this happy place, welcome. Welcome to the Talk About the Magic podcast, where you'll find inspiration and encouragement tied together with the magic of Disney. Now, here's your host, Joseph Ballesteros. What is going on, Magic Chairs? Welcome to another episode of Talk About the Magic. This is episode 194. I am your host, Di- uh, Disney. I'm your host, Joseph, <laughs> Joseph uh, for this Disney-inspired podcast. If it's your first time here, welcome. Focusing, the, you know, this podcast is all about focusing on inspiration and encouragement um, through, of course, some Walt Disney wisdom and more. And guys, please, please keep being awesome. Please keep hitting that subscribe button and keep sharing the podcast. It means the world to me. So if it's your first time here, welcome. And I hope you enjoyed today's show. And I encourage you to go check out the previous shows as well. And hopefully you'll find something that will get you inspired and motivated to start moving toward your goal today. So today's episode, today's show um, seeing what may not be there yet. So what does that mean, right? We, we've heard kind of, we probably have heard something to this extent. Um, people call it a vision board. Uh, keep, people call it, you know, speaking it into fruition, like all of these different things. And that's all fine, right? Whatever works. Um, but in this case, what we're kind of referring to is really just the, the, that simple statement, which is seeing what may not be there yet. Whenever you have set in front of you an idea or a goal, it is very, very tough to see how, one, you're going to get there, and then, two, how the end result will truly be because you don't know the future. As much as you might feel like you do, you don't. There's so many things that can come out of left field. There's so many things that can completely throw, you know, everything that, you know, all your plans and everything that you had, you know, made a whole purpose for. It can throw it completely off. And when that happens, it can feel frustrating. It can feel sometimes even like it's not even worth pursuing anymore. It could just be a complete deflation of all your hopes and dreams. I mean, it can be that, you know, crucial, that crushing. And so why is it important to have an idea of of what is going to be there. The reason why it's important is because when those things happen, when when that setback happens, when that hiccup comes into play, when the bump in the road happens, when you trip on your feet, whatever it is, when you see what isn't there yet, you are able to get up and say, that's what I'm doing this for. That's the reason why. That's the reason why it's worth going through everything I'm going through. That's the reason why it's worth feeling these frustrations and feeling this this desperation and, and this... This sometimes even depression. It's worth it for that thing. When you want to lose weight, you are thinking about your end goal weight. You are thinking about how you will look at the end of all of the hard work you know that it's going to take. You're not considering the things that could happen, right? You're not considering that you might hurt your leg or you're, you know, you might strain something where it'll take you out of commission for a couple weeks. You're not thinking about the sacrifices on the changing of the eating habits that you're going to have to do. You're not thinking, you're just thinking about that end goal. And when you think about that, that's what gets you pumped up. That's why it's easy in the beginning of the year to just say, you know what, I'm going to lose 60 pounds. That's the easy part. The hard part is continuing on when those things happen, when these setbacks happen. You have an idea, you have a goal, you say, I want to start this business, or I want to start doing YouTube or podcasting, or I want to, you know, try to do more things with the family, or I want, you know, all of these things. You, you don't think about that end goal the right way. You don't think about how it'll be when it actually gets completed, when it actually gets done. Whenever something comes in the way, I guarantee it is going to just knock out the air from you. And it could, like I said, it could in the end actually completely stop you from continuing on whatever it is you're trying to achieve. It's important to focus on that one goal that you're trying to do, whether it's big or small, and understand that it will take time. It's not necessarily always going to be within the time frame that you want or expect it to be. But if you continue on and you keep pushing toward it, it will come true. Maybe. A lot of things come into play, right? A lot of things have to work out. But one thing that I can guarantee, like every, like I've said before and so many other people have said who are in in a place where we want to be, in a place of success that we want to reach, which is if you do not try, you will never get there. That is a guarantee. It will never happen. In one way or another, in one form or another, your dream will never be true because you don't try. Your goal will never be, you know, conquered because you don't try. So what helps is keeping that idea, keeping that that end goal and the vision of what will be, even though you don't necessarily see it there. 
for for me personally, you know, it's it's this whole weight loss thing, and my goal is to lose a certain amount of weight. And I'm saying within a year, year and about five months or so, because last time this happened, it took about that, it took about a year and a half to lose the sixty pounds. Now I say that I understand though that might not happen. You know, part of me now knows that life does happen, and you know, back then when I did it, I had no kind of other distractions. My, I only had, you know, one kid who was barely, barely born, newborn, so very little work needed to be done. I know that sounds crazy because you think like, well, baby has to do more work. Well, it's more work now in the sense of time consuming because you have school, you have after school activities and, you know, afterwards too, you don't want him just to be sitting in front of the TV all day. So, you know, it was a little easier because, you know, my kid would nap and then I'd go, my wife would watch him for two hours, three hours and I'd go and be able to work out. Like that was all I focused on. Now I understand that there's a lot more to it. I'm older. My body can't necessarily do what it used to. I have two kids and both of them are at right now in a very, you know, I have to be involved kind of state because of what they do. Like I said, they have a lot of after school activities and stuff. I have a job. I just got another job. Very excited. I don't know if I could talk about it yet, but I'll talk about it soon. Uh, I'm still doing the podcast. I'm doing the the store on, on Etsy and everything. So I understand that time is becoming more and more hard to come by. And so even though I've given myself a goal, I have to be realistic to tell myself, you know what? If you really want it, you can make it happen. But you, for some reason, if if something happens and you don't get to necessarily where you're at by the time you want, that doesn't mean it's it's time to quit. That doesn't mean it's over. You have to keep going. And what helps me to keep pushing through that is my visual. I look at myself now and I don't see what I'm going for. You know what I mean? And I have to I have to change the mentality because when you look like, okay, let's let me just get personal. When I look at myself now and I don't see what I'm going for, I get the idea of what's the point. Right. I mean, this is too hard. And honestly, I'm okay. You know, I'm all right. Not that. I'm not too, too big where it's necessarily a quote unquote health problem. I'm not so, you know, that I'm not able to, you know, run with the kids a little here and there. I'm not, you know, I'm not wheezing or anything like that by walking a couple steps. Like I'm okay. I I don't, I don't need to be all that hardcore about it. That's the mindset that's very easy for me to slip into. Like, oh, you know, most of my family is this way. And, you know, I've seen a lot of people who are bigger than me. Like it's easy to get in that kind of mind uh, you know, mindset of thinking that way when you don't see what you want to see in the end and you just look at the now and you realize, I don't want to go to the gym right now. <laughs> I'm tired. Like this morning, I was I woke up early. I was excited. I was supposed to go to the gym today. I woke up early. I put on my contacts and my eyes just got on fire. And honestly, it's because I didn't sleep enough. My eyes were very tired. They're very irritated. And the contacts just really were burning them up. And I had a decision to make. Do I go to the gym or do I go back to sleep and let my body rest and my eyes, you know, get what they need? And I chose the second. I did not go to the You probably were like, oh, he fought through. He went to the gym. <laughs> no, I did not. I did not. I went back to bed and I, I woke up feeling much more refreshed, much more ready to go. And actually, when I'm done with the show, I'm going to actually go to the gym now. But you see what I'm saying? Like, there's going to be times when you just don't, you don't make that decision of trying to get to your goal because whatever's in front of you, is just, it's too much for that time. And so you, you take a little setback, you take a little hit and you say, you know what? Not right now. But when you have that m- mindset of seeing what isn't there yet, you're able to really understand why it's worth fighting for. Cause people around you aren't going to understand, right? We are, we've gone over this. They're not going to know why you care so much about trying to do whatever it is you're trying to do, because that's not what they're trying to do. So because they don't see the end result yet and they know how much work you're going to have to go through and they see you struggling and they see you frustrated at times, it's easy for them to be like, why do you keep doing it? Do you know the chances of this actually succeeding are? You should just stop. Everybody's fine. You're comfortable. Don't worry about it. Don't try. And it's easy for them to say that. And that's why it's very, very important for you to think ahead, to think about what is going to be and why you're doing so much because when those time you know when those moments come you will be tempted to be like you're right maybe I should take a little setback and maybe I should just sit a little longer maybe I should not 
get up and start pursuing a little more. And sometimes it'll seem like it makes the most sense to not do anything. Sometimes it'll seem like it'll make the most sense to to just completely be comfortable because there's a lot of people who wish they could be as comfortable as you. But you can't take that mentality because you don't know what you're going to be able to change. You don't know how much better you can be should you achieve that goal you have in front of you, you know? And so I have to change my mentality and I have to see what I want to see. I have to think about what I want to, what I want to see the scale at, what I want. Now, we're t- now this is different. We're not talking about like perfection because that's a whole different thing. Like, you know, if I'm telling myself I want to see a 10 pack and I want that's totally fine. But there's a whole different kind of, you know, walk I have to go to to do that there's a whole another type of sacrifices i have to do to do that so you have to be realistic on what you're trying to achieve so for me i don't really care about a 10 pack i don't really care about you know insane muscle definition i'm not trying to be p90x person i want to lose for me my thing i want to lose my 60 pounds but for me personally like my big thing is i want to go back to being able to just run six miles Because it was such an amazing feeling for me. I loved it. There is nothing that I could compare it to, unless you're a runner, um, of what it feels like to be able to run that way. Like you just get in this this zone. And when you reach that zone, it's tough to get to the zone. But once you reach that zone, it's incredible. Like you just, you're there. I, 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 I was talking to a lady at the gym and she was telling me, about some classes they were doing, but they were, she was telling me about one of the, the people they have in the class. She's 66 years old, and she's about to do her first Ironman. She just finished doing a 10K at 66, and I see her running. She's training for it, and I see her doing it, and I could see she's in that zone <laughs> because there's the TV's off in front of her. She has headphones. She has a very, very, you know, constant pace for a good, you know, at least the five minutes that we were talking and I'm looking at her up to 10 minutes and then I went next to her and started running. But she has that constant pace. And you know how I knew she was in a zone? Because she was singing to herself. When you are running for as long as you are running and you are able to make sentences and words and be able to still breathe properly and, and function properly in that way after running for that amount of time, it's because you've trained your body well enough and you've you've gotten to the zone. Your heart rate is perfect. Your speed is perfect. You are able to function and keep on going. And oh my gosh, I just cannot wait to get that feeling again. So anyway, <laughs> so for me, that's those are my goals. You know, I know that if I wanted to do getting a 10 pack or 8 pack, whatever, I don't even think a 10 pack exists. I don't know. Probably it does. But if I wanted to do that, I know it would be a completely different road I'd have to take. But for me personally, I want to lose my weight and I want to run. Because I love it. And I think it's because as a kid, I hated it so much. And it was because I was a big kid. It was hard for me to do it. It was a struggle. And and I felt embarrassed because every time in basketball practice or in PE, I was the last one. And and people would cheer me on. They were so proud if I could make it past that finish line. Even though everyone else in my team had made it past like a good 10 minutes before me. But here I am just huffing and puffing. So maybe that's what it is. I don't know. But... I love it. And that's what I care about. That's my goal. So what do I see? What do I see that isn't there yet? Well, I see it. Obviously, I see my body being different because as somebody who runs, your body loses a lot of that kind of definition, becomes a lot more leaner. I see my face getting down again no more double chin like it used to, you know, when I had lost all the weight, the double chin was gone. It was was amazing. (laughs) And I see myself being more energized. I see myself not taking random naps. I see myself not being just rather to lie down than get up and move. And that's what I see. That that isn't there yet. And seeing that helps me gets gets me motivated to get up and go. Now, that same thing you put in your own situation, right? If you're trying to start your own business, don't think about the money per se as far as like, oh, I'm going to be rich, I'm going to no. But think about what the success could bring. Think about, you know, you having the free time to do more what you're trying to do. Think about you feeling that sense of accomplishment because you were actually able to do this thing you set out. Think about how much better your life would be in whatever state it's in now because you were able to make this move. Like whatever it is you're trying to do, you just put yourself in that situation and you think ahead. You're not thinking, it's not It's not a magical thing where you say, oh yeah, you know, I'm going to just keep picturing it and after 15 days it'll just it'll happen right away 
doors are going to just make it happen right away. Listen, if that happens, awesome. That's great. But history and and what people have, you know, the people who have met, you know, gotten to the places they're at as far as successful going, you know, whatever is trying to achieve, what they have all proved and what they've all said is it takes time, it takes works, but it also takes that perseverance. So they didn't they didn't put a time frame. They didn't say it was 20 days of just saying it out loud and then bam, it was it was, you know, in front of them it happened. But it was about them seeing what wasn't there yet. They knew they wanted to achieve this. They knew they wanted to make this happen and they knew that it no matter what it, you know, no matter what reason why it seemed like it wasn't going to be possible, they had to keep going. They could not let that stop them. And so what we see is this idea, this mindset of believing and seeing what isn't there yet. So, I mean, it, like I said, it sounds maybe like it's a little, you know, like, oh, you're just talking about like dreaming and, you know, that's, that doesn't make things happen. And I'm not saying it makes it happen, but it helps to make it happen because it helps you keep the proper mindset. I'm telling you, it is going to be hard. It is going to be difficult, whatever it is you're trying to achieve. It will not be easy. Now, some things will be easier than others, sure, but it will not be easy. There will be moments when it becomes very hard and it feels like it's not worth it. And I know I've given up on so many things because I felt like that, and I regret it. Simple as that. And I'm sure if you look at your own life, you will find things that you can think about now where you say, man, you know, I kind of regret that too. I wonder what would have happened if I just kept going. I wonder what would happen if I didn't just give up. So it's important to keep that mindset of seeing what isn't there yet. So today's quote, this, this is from the quote of Walt Disney. I love this quote because it's, again, I, I, I like reading, reading these quotes because you get to see kind of an inside glimpse of Walt and, and what he's saying, he says so much in so little words. He said, I first saw the site of Disneyland back in 1953. In those days, it was all flat land. No rivers, no mountains, no castles or rocket ships. Just orange groves and a few acres of walnut trees. Talk about having an idea of what you want to see. He saw the issues and the problems in front of him. He saw nothing but barren land. He saw nothing but orange, <laughs> orange trees. He saw nothing. He saw nothing but walnut trees and the groves. Like, how can you imagine a park that was put there in a place like that? That's difficult. That is difficult to see something ahead of time and he knew though he knew this is going to be it and he knew what his goal was and how the end was going to be and he was now working toward it he was now working toward creating what he believed his goal was he wanted his goal to become a reality and he had a lot of setbacks i mean the first one is just that and we've talked about in previous shows other other issues he had where the bank said we we, we can't just go by a dream it was hard. It was hard for him to get credibility. It was hard for him to get finances. It was hard for him to get people on board with him because they couldn't see. They didn't think the way he thought. They just saw what was in front of him. They didn't think about the end goal. They couldn't see what wasn't there yet. That's why it's so important to change your mindset into thinking of what isn't there yet. Whatever goal you're trying to reach, Think about what it'll be like when you achieve it. Think about what, you know, the difference that'll be when you make it happen. And then focus on that. Because in front of you right now, it might be nothing but barren land. It might be nothing but some a few acres of walnut trees and orange groves. And it's hard for anyone else to understand what you're saying. It's hard for anyone else to see what you see. But if you picture it, if you see what isn't there yet, you know that all of this in front that doesn't seem like it makes sense. You know that all of this in front that seems like it's going to be just nothing but a, a problem. You know it's all going to be worth it. You know it's all going to be okay because you see what your end goal is. And all of this stuff that's between you and that end, that's all it is. 
It's just stuff that you're going to be able to push away. You're going to be able to create something out of, and you're going to be able to get to where you're trying to be. And the proverb is, now faith is a confidence in what we hope for and assurance about what we do not see. That comes from Hebrews 11.1. 1. That one, again, is pretty obvious in what it's saying. It's it, And I love that because this is what we hope for. It's not something that is like, and, and it's scary, right? It's scary to say that because we, we want to feel like, listen, you said if I follow my dreams, it's going to come true. It's not guaranteed. Like nothing in this life is guaranteed. There was no guarantee that Walt was going to get what he was going to get. Let's get realistic, right? Let's get real. There's no guarantee. There was no guarantee that, you know, his films were going to be successful. And like I said, whatever goal you're trying to reach, realistically, there's no guarantee you're going to get it. There is no guarantee. Things in life have a, a, a way of happening sometimes that completely sideline you and completely mess things up. And it's scary to think that way. But that's why you are thinking of those things hoped for. You are thinking about what you hope to accomplish, what your end goal is. Because should that happen, even though now it might be more difficult, even though now you might have to take a huge roundabout instead of going straight through like you were originally planning, even though now you might have to ask a lot more help than when you originally started, even though now it might have to be that you have to fight more people, you have to fight more you know, resistance from when you originally started or what you had hoped to actually have to fight through. Like No matter what, because you have that idea of what you are going for, because you are thinking of that end goal, no matter how long you're sidelined, no matter how long you get hit, no matter how many times people tell you no, you will keep on pushing through because you know that it is at least worth trying to reach where you're trying to reach. Don't worry about how long it's going to take you. Don't worry about, you know, how much work it's going to be. Because when you have that in front of you, when you have that knowledge of, when you see what isn't there yet, it'll be worth it. You'll be able to push through. And that's what's important. That is what you need to keep doing. So again, today, think about it. Whatever it is you're trying to reach, whatever goal you have in front of you, think about what it is and see the end result and start working toward that. I hope you enjoyed today's podcast. Again, guys, feel free to shoot me an email at talk about the magic, talk about the magic podcast at gmail.com. Feel free to send me a direct message on Twitter, Facebook, anywhere like that, Instagram. I hope you guys have an amazing, wonderful night, day, weekend, whenever you're listening to this. And as always, stay magical. This was the Talk About the Magic podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, please be sure to rate, subscribe, and share with a friend. Thanks for listening. And as always, stay magical. Stay magical.